My name's Brock Aspen, I'm 17 years old and I play for Bristol City. When I stepped out to play Reading in the pre-season, I felt absolutely fine. I felt like a smash pre-season, I felt ready, I felt strong. Brooke was in tip-top physical condition. She'd come off the back of a summer competing with England, off the back of a season. She'd been, you know, 16 years old, pretty much starting every game for us last season. Tipped to be the next, the next big thing, and then this uh, illness just came in and, and took all that away in a heartbeat. It all went back and started in a training session, I think. We were in the warm-up and my groin wasn't quite right. I said, there's something going on here, but I think I'm fine, I can train. Next day, then the groin started to hit and I was like, yeah, something's not right. Brooke came in to the medical room having already been discharged from hospital. So she'd been to hospital complaining of groin pain and they'd done lots of tests and blood tests and scans and things. Couldn't find anything, so sent her home uh, saying soft tissue injury rest for some time. She came to see us the following day complaining of groin pain, abdominal pain and some nausea. And something about those things didn't quite add up. We did not predict how bad it was going to get. I couldn't play the first game of the season, which I was devastated about, but I thought I'd go and support the girls on the bus. I had two crutches, got worse and worse on the bus. We arrived and it suddenly like kicked in. I had, I couldn't really walk. Both my legs were just completely numb. And I remember having to go up these, there were so many steps, so many steps. And it took me about 20 minutes to get up them. This could be poked forward. This could be a real chance. Oh, and Bristol City have taken the lead early in this second half. My mum took me home and I was on the sofa because I couldn't make it up the stairs. And she was like, Brock, I'm going to take you to now. We got there and I couldn't walk. The hospital were... were at a loose end, they didn't really know what was going on initially. They were testing her for pretty much everything under the sun. They eventually found that she had a bone infection in her pelvic area and various complications followed after that. The point for us when we knew that this was really, really bad uh, was when she was admitted from the high dependency unit onto the intensive care unit. And at that point, that hit us all like a ton of bricks. I think the lowest point for me was knowing that I lost the ability to do things that I could do before. And it got to a point where my mum had to help me shower, help me go to the toilet. And at one point I couldn't even, I couldn't even go to the toilet. Complications of the bone infection included a blood clot in her groin, but by the time they found this, she was uh, too weak for the operation that she needed to remove the infection and the blood clot. So, they uh, just hit her with loads and loads of antibiotics to try and get on top of the infection enough and to control the rest of the complications that were going on in her body. They managed to do that eventually and she had the operation which was thankfully successful. However, by that time her body had been fighting the infection so hard that it actually started to turn on itself and that meant that she contracted sepsis. And not a lot of people that get sepsis and are on intensive care for three weeks, get out of that situation, let alone come back to playing professional football. Not for one second did I think I was going to be back on the pitch this season. I wanted to come back and be fit and healthy. I didn't, I didn't care about being that player I was before because all I cared about was my health at that point because no one knew what was going to happen. And if I came out of hospital in a fit shape, just breathing, happy, just with a smile on my face, that was the main thing for me at that point. The hardest part about it all was 
sitting down the players in the gym and explaining to them that Brooke needs this operation, but at the moment she's too poorly to have that. And trying to get across the severity of the situation, but without scaring them too much. You know, the, the average age of the squad is like 22. They're, they're kids themselves, 17 year old kids in there. So we're trying, trying to support them and give them hope, but with still getting across the, the gravity of the situation. I'm going to be honest, I didn't actually watch it because I was so focused on myself at that point, and I think anyone can understand why. And it comes to the near post. Oh, is it going all the way in? It's been tapped in in the end. Pin ball inside the penalty area, and eventually it is last in, and Bristol City do have their second goal before half time. I think remembering how I was, was is the hardest thing for me. There was one moment in hospital, probably about two weeks in, and I looked at my dad, I burst into tears, and I was like, Dad, I, I don't know who I am anymore. I didn't know if I could ever come back to the person I was or be the, be the player I was before. That is all I wanted in those three weeks that I was sat in the hospital bed. I came out of hospital and I remember ringing my nan. I was like, nan, please, can you make me a bath? I got home and so many things went through my head. And it was just so, so nice to get into my own bed and have been in my own home. People came down to see me. That, For instance, Mads and Lil came down. And I would never tell them this, but that was probably one of the toughest things for me. Because for, for them seeing me before, I was fit, I was healthy, I was happy, I was tanned. And then they came and I had no muscle. I was pale. I just wasn't myself at all. And even though I was fighting a battle in hospitals, like they were also fighting a battle because I had no, I had no phone, no communication. So they were completely left on their own known, unknown. And like, I'm sorry to them that I couldn't communicate. So that was probably a tough time for them as well. But I was so grateful that I was able to see them. Brooke came back to club 19 days after. And from before, fully healthy professional athlete, gymming three times a week, training four days a week, you know, top physical fitness, to then 10 kgs lighter, pale as a sheet, just looking a, a shell of her former self. So I came in and I remember walking through those doors and I seen the girls at that moment, I thought I looked all right and normal, but I look back now and think, yeah, yeah, you, you weren't right. But it was so, so nice for them just to see their faces again and to see the coaches as well. I think it was Crystal Palace in the cup that we had. And yeah, that was, I can't really describe it apart from just amazing being back with the girls, really. This, the scars from the surgery had, had basically healed, but we knew from that moment that this was going to be a long road to recovery, whether we were going to get her back this season, next season, nobody knew at this stage. It was all unknown. I'd go for two minute walks and have to stop. Um, but the thing that I'd like to like, look through is that it was getting bit better each day. Even if it was two minutes, 10 seconds, that's still an extra 10 seconds than it was before. We were essentially starting from scratch. She, at, the, at this moment, her blood pressure, heart rate, everything was still a bit up in the air. She lost 10 kilos of muscle mass. Um, physiologically, things weren't quite working properly yet. So we had to just bide our time a little bit with those and let the body heal and try and supplement those things with whatever we could uh, in the first instance. Essentially, we were waiting for her body to get back to being a normal human. Athlete was nowhere, even in our sights at this point, we were, we were aiming for normal human. The most challenging part of the recovery was just the unknown. There's not, there's not many elite athletes 
that go through this type of, of illness and, and come out the other side so quickly and so keen to get back into to training. I think the support from the staff is something that I can't describe because the work that they put in is something that I can never give back to them and I am so, so thankful for everything that they did for me. And it's one thing that I really cherish through life and knowing that there are people out there that really do care about you. My biggest milestone was my weight. I came out and I lost a lot of weight and for someone who knows me knows that I take really a lot of pride in the way I look and like the way I feel and I absolutely love the gym and I came out and I lost so much muscle for, like from head to toe and I looked in the mirror when I came back and I was like that's that's not you you need like, to change that you need to change that work hard for it when people asked me to weigh myself I was like I don't want to look can you can you tell me what it is so for for weeks on end when people were doing that I didn't look but then I finally raised the courage after I felt okay to look on the scales and as soon as I looked that's when it's kick start kick started and I wanted to gain, gain gain more and more muscle as I could because that was something that I really take pride in. It was such a slow process for me and as the physios may know I got on their nerves they got on mine because of the process and I just have to trust it. I didn't trust it at that point but when I look back now I look back and think why didn't I trust that? to you Brooke, well done firstly, you have been on a phenomenal journey and you need so much credit to get yourself back here, I'm so proud of you, so well done. Thank you. We know there's lots to come, there has always been lots to come for Brooke and you know we're all excited for the next part of the journey as well, so uh, yeah. Obviously I'm incredibly proud of you, um, I don't think I could ever gone through anything like this as strong as you have, so just to call you my best friend is obviously the best thing possible. So, but yeah, I, like on the bad days I've had you, on the good days I've had you, but you've also had me. And it's the first time that we can get this back uh, hanging up. So, Brooke, we want to give it to you in person. <laughs> I can't really put into words how it felt to see my name in the matchday squad again. I realised that all the work that I had put in to where I was six months ago to now to earn my place back felt, felt unreal. Two hundred and three days later, after being admitted, Brooke steps onto the pitch against Durham. It was the, just a moment that we'd all been looking forward to for her for so long, and there wasn't there wasn't even any nerves or anything like that. We knew she was ready, and she was going to step onto that pitch and show everyone what she could do. <laughs> I had so, so many emotions running back onto the pitch for that first time, but I think the thing that was going through my head was the emotions that my family was getting. Because as much as I was finding it tough in hospital, I can't imagine how tough they were finding it. I just wanted to do it for them. Having to go to MS every day at the hospital for sleeping on those, I wouldn't even call them chairs, but they did that and they did that for me. All I wanted to do was make them proud at that point. Probably the longest 203 days of my life. Um, certainly one of the hardest things I'll ever have to deal with in my career and that of our performance medical team as well. She is the most determined, the most uh, incredible person to go through such a horrible ordeal but come out on top. and go 
goes in for goal number three for Bristol City. And now surely they know that promotion is confirmed. And it's a celebration from Brooke Aspin. And as the full time whistle is blown, Bristol City can start the party. There is one thing that always sticks with me and that is make sure you cherish every moment because no one knew what was going to happen. If your nan or your granddad asks you to come around for a coffee, do that and make sure you cherish that moment because tomorrow may not be the same as today. Time is short, life is short, so live it while you can. <laughs>